Okay, so today what we'll be discussing is something that is not heavily used in the financial trading industry, even by retail traders or by algorithmic traders, and that is basically using linear regression and how we can generate lots of um, alpha from it. So this is one of the results that we had figured out in using this strategy. We'll also be uh, running the same strategy in Quant Connect as well, a slightly improved one so that we can get a real life example result uh, or with respect to fees and also other aspects as well. Um, and also since we're doing two data sets, it will be more ideal to see how accurate the results are. We will also be discussing how to improve the strategy and this code will be available uh, in the description box, but the improved strategy, uh, which is like almost close to 1,400% return, that will be only available for our students. Uh, the codes will be available for them both in Quant Connect and PineScript, but the free version will only be giving it in PineScript. So uh, this strategy, as you can see, it's a pretty much of a mean reverting strategy. It's ideally meant only for SPY, uh, and mean reverting strategies generally tend to perform well during volatile moments. So. Uh, if you can see here, this is the 2008, you can see a, a drastic difference in the returns. The green line is uh, strategy performance and the blue line is the buy and hold of the SPY. And you can also see the 2001.com bubble as well and also this recent uh, past two years as well. So even now, as we speak today, as I record this video, 16th of November, we are actually in a big positive trade. The previous trade was a bit of a loss. Um, but otherwise there's been some good profit returns. You can look at the performance summary. Uh, you can see uh, some of the good returns. Uh, the buy and hold just had an 871% return, but the really one that we kind of improved on has hit the 1,400% uh, return. So first we'll start with the what a linear regression is, but before that I would like to discuss the performance. So some of the people have asked me about my personal performance result during this year. So I posted last February, uh, in the Calculate Intrinsic Value for Stock like Warren Buffett video, uh, my returns, my portfolio performance returns uh, on my Interactive Brokers account. And at that time, it was 24% returns. So currently, just log in. So currently, as of today, we are at 32% uh, return and at what the highest peak I had close to 77% return um, it's not that bad overall for me but I'm quite not happy that the portfolio kind of went down from the 77% all the way down to 32 but if I look at with the benchmark S&P 500 return uh, it's been pretty good because S&P 500 as of today is 17% year to date while my portfolio is 32% so one of the difficulties that I faced this year was with regards to rebalancing the portfolio. So many of the con traders might know it or even value investors also might know it as well. So sometimes one of the biggest issues that you face is like rebalancing your account for different strategies. So for instance, you have five strategies and you've allocated $10,000 each for all these five strategies. So you've got $50,000 and let's say three of those strategies perform spectacularly well. Uh, and overall, this has become now, your portfolio has become $100,000. So do you rebalance it? Do you now take it all, divide it by five and allocate $20,000 each to the, uh, to the five strategies? Uh, when do you do that? So what happened to me is like, the strategies performed, the couple of strategies, especially the mean reverting strategy, which we're gonna discuss now, uh, and also my personal mean reverting strategies, they performed spectacularly well during the first half of the year. And then they start to underperform during the second part of the year while the other strategies started to kind of catch up. Uh, but because the majority of the funds is on that strategy, it kind of led to uh, this heavy drawdown. Uh, so what I do personally is that I kind of rebalance the strategy at the end of the year. Uh, I allocate the funds accordingly to different strategies at the end of the year. But uh, some of the people, they rebalance it every six months. Some people do it based on their own judgments. Uh, so this is also something that as quant traders or as retail investing traders, you need to understand. But regardless, whether you rebalance or not rebalance throughout the year, the idea for you is to beat the S&P 500. And that, that's not just for this year. So you might think, oh yeah, I've beaten the S&P 500 this year, but that's not a big deal for me. For me, it's like I should be beating the S&P 500 buy and hold 
for the next 10 years, for the next 20 years, for the entirety of my life. Otherwise, there's no point in me being an active uh, participate, participant in the financial markets. I could just invest all my money in the S&P 500, buy and hold and leave it out there. I mean, if it's not the S&P 500, if you look at the Vanguard Total World Stock Index, again, I would outperform that one. Uh, so you get the idea. And this is what you're looking for. If you're looking at the weekly and monthly, none of this really matters, but I'm just giving it to you so that you guys get an idea on what to look out for. Um, but at the end of the day, all you need to do is to beat the CAGR drawdown, CAGR to drawdown ratio, S&P 500 in the long term. It doesn't have to be this specific year. So you can, you personally could have like a horrible year this year, but the next two years or three years, you could like be having spectacular great returns and I could be having not so great results. But at the end of the day, it's like your target is to be the S&P 500 buy and hold uh, CAGR and the drawdown ratio. Uh, so we'll just start with the simple linear regression. So this is from the Boston uh, University. I'll leave the link uh, in the description. And um, um, I'm not going to go deep into it because there's lots of available resources with regards to simple linear regression. Uh, so basically, I've got the x-axis and the y-axis. So let's say we'll, we'll give a simple example here. This is the reason why I picked this specific uh, site because you've got the height and you've got the body weight. So we scatter these numbers, we actually plot these numbers with so the height and the weight in the graph, and then we figure out a line, a linear line, uh, kind of close fitting to all these scatter plots, and we use that as a predictive measure to find out the body weight. So in this, the target variable is the, pri uh, is the body weight, and the predictive variable is the height. Um, so, on the other hand, when we are doing trading, the x-axis will be the time and the y-axis will be the price or the closing price. Uh, so, y equals a plus b of x and basically there will be an error term there as well. So, whenever you have like a height, you put that in there and then they calculate the weight. So, similarly, once we get the equation y equals a plus bx, we basically feed in our time uh, and then we'll get the closing price of that specific period. So now if i can go into the this is the pine script chart i'm just going to leave this here for now and um, i'm just going to get the indicators and linear regression so linear regression channel so you can see this is like a hundred period linear regression so 100 periods of linear regression is kind of plotted this is the upper end and the lower end this i think that's a two standard deviation uh, on the upper and uh, uh, lower standard deviation. Uh, so you can actually choose five periods, you can choose whatever periods you want. So basically it just takes a linear regression of that X amount of periods and basically calculates it. So you can use it for different kinds of strategies. You can use it for a trend following or a mean reverting or a momentum based strategies. Uh, so I'm using this at the moment, this video will discuss about mean reverting strategies. Because uh, there isn't much mean reverting strategies out there in YouTube or many places and many of the students have, uh, have expressed concern to give me more ideas on uh, mean reverting strategies. So let's discuss basically the strategy that we have coded here. So the initially we have we've allocated a capital so for this strategy so you can you can do one thousand dollars you can do five hundred dollars you can do five thousand I've just put a five thousand which is a roughly starting point so five thousand dollars is allocated fully for this strategy so whenever there's an entry signal or an exit signal this capital is allocated as a starting capital right from day one so you can actually change it to one hundred dollars if you want but it depends upon your capital size and so now we have allocated the length so we're using a fourteen period uh, length and then ta dot linear Lindreg basically gives you the linear regression curve and that gets stored into Lindreg. Okay, so the source is the closing price and the length is a 14. So you've got the closing price and you've got the 14 period. So you've got a 14 period linear regression. And then here comes the condition, really. So the condition is if close is less than Lindreg and the close is greater than TA.SMA close comma 200, uh, we end uh, long. So basically, if the market closing price is lower than the linear regression line and the close is above the 200 day moving average we end along and we close the position so initially i'm just gonna bookmark this one here uh, and we're going to close it when the closing price is greater than the linear regression line okay and similarly we are going to enter short when the closing price is above the linear regression line 
and then we also make sure that we are fundamentally in a downtrend so that's why we're checking the uh, simple moving average the closing price is less than the 200 day moving average so we know that we are in a downtrend we're kind of going in favor of the uh, long-term trend so then we end the short uh, and then we close the position when the close is less than uh, linear regression so that's pretty much it so if i can add this to the chart let's see what we get so overall we've got 684.78 percent return with a 25 percent drawdown so in this you can see the buy and hold has technically beaten us with respect to returns not by drawdowns because the drawdowns of buy and hold spy is 50 plus 55 um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make some changes to this right this is where as one traders we kind of have an edge so we are going to make slight changes to it now to close of one is greater than linear regression now let's see what we get and now let's see the returns and now we've got the returns substantially improved it's 985 percent return the drawdown hasn't changed substantially but we have beaten buy and hold with respect to net returns and by drawdowns of the s p 500. Uh, we can keep on changing this and that's where another skill of quant traders come that is basically optimization so uh, students of quant program know how to optimize those results uh, they know how to uh, do forward testing because pure optimization is simply not enough you will have to uh, optimize this and then do a forward testing at a regular interval so that you can get a better returns and on top of that you will also have to do the position sizing if you're doing a portfolio based uh, strategy so what i can do is i can also optimize in many many situations i can actually optimize this uh, SMA I can actually optimize the exit I can give a completely different exit uh, you can you can actually get exits something that you have never even thought about you don't have to uh, put the entrance as a linear regression and the exit as a linear regression you can actually mix this up uh, so here let's say we do like 17 let's see what we get with the um, strategy tester so now you see you only got 888 percent actually it kind of went down now but we've actually improved on our drawdown. So we can keep on doing this and our target could be the CAGR to drawdown ratio. Uh, but as always, make sure you do the forward testing. So I'm gonna make some minor changes, which is only available to our quant program students uh, to make this result substantially better. And I'm gonna blur this out as of now. Uh, so we made actually two changes here. And then let's see what we get the result. So I made like a couple of changes. And then now the result is 1,239%. You can see the substantial difference uh, in the strategy just because of changing a few things in the strategy. Uh, now I can go ahead and change even more. Now it's 1,447%. So this code will be available for our Quant program students. Uh, and you guys can make keep on making changes to it but at the end of the day you know the blueprint i'm going to explain roughly the blueprint uh, for quant traders that we teach in the quant program uh, community and that's basically first you do a brainstorming idea you come up with different entrants and different exits and all kinds of conditions once you're done with that then comes the back testing bit and once the back testing thing bit is gives you a green signal then you go into optimization but optimization is just basically curve fitting so you don't want curve fitted result so you need to do a forward test as well so how often are you going to plan to do a forward test so we we taught our traders in quant program two simple examples one with just a moving average and the other with an rsi as well on how we can apply optimization but with regular uh, forward testing as well so once the forward testing is done you can apply it in different products so svy it's a good place to apply the mean reverting strategies, but for stocks, uh, you might want to do a position sizing and a portfolio backtest. So for that, you have to do the exact same process. You do the position sizing and portfolio backtest, and then on top of that, you do a Monte Carlo simulation uh, as well. So you have to combine all these things before you give a strategy a green signal. So these are just rough business, I mean, rough uh, strategy ideas that you can implement. Uh, but before you give a green signal to all these strategies, you have to take everything into consideration. So now let's go into Quant Connect. So I've had special exits and special exits too. Um, so if you can look at both these strategies, you can see the fees here. So we've taken commissions into account. This is the interactive brokers default commissions that's set in Quant Connect. 
so we've done a video on Quant Connect uh, tutorial, complete tutorial, and it's one of the best systems out there for execution of algorithmic trading strategies. And they have got uh, connections, inbuilt connections with lots of the famous brokers around the world. Uh, you just have to plug it in and just go live. And it's, it's as simple as that. Just, just log in your username and password to your uh, broker and then that's it. So here you can see the returns are not that great. It's a 1,052% and 1, roughly 1,000. But you have to understand that this strategy started in 1998. This data, on the other hand, started from 1994. But roughly, we've got almost close, uh, the results uh, being quite close. Again, different data feeds, so that's also a consideration that you have to do. So if you can scroll down here, you can see the drawdown 24%, which is roughly around the drawdown that we were looking at here in PineScript as well. 10% uh, CAGR, again here, again. 10% CAGR, roughly 27% drawdown. So if you can look at the average win average draw, these are typical numbers that you would see for a mean reverting strategy. For a trend following strategy, generally you will see something like a higher one, maybe like threes to one kind of an average win to average loss. Uh, no, I mean like the average win will be like a bigger amount. Uh, the win rate will be uh, lower for a trend following mo a trend following or momentum trading strategy, but for mean reverting strategy, win rates will generally be higher. So here you can see the win rate is 6 to 6%. If you can scroll down here, the win rate is all 65%. So if I can go to the Pine Script one, mm, percentage profitable is 68%. So these are all uh, rough values that you have got uh, in both these platforms. So hope you guys kind of understood how linear regression strategies can be created and how can be applied to so mean reverting strategies. I would generally advise you to create it in the index, never to do it in stocks. So if you're doing it in stocks, uh, then make sure you do a portfolio back test and a Monte Carlo simulation. So for stocks, uh, when you do a portfolio, I prefer to do trend and momentum following strategies. So the last two years, if you can see my results in the interactive brokers as well, uh, this year my performance has been substantially well because of my mean reverting strategies, because the S&P 500 was quite volatile. Now, sometimes it can be not that volatile. It can be like a slow grinding market up. So in that case, the mean reverting strategies generally don't give you much returns. But however, the trend following and the momentum based strategies on stocks give you substantial returns. So you have to get a portfolio of strategies, just not one strategy. And each strategy you should allocate X amount of money. You know, For example, one strategy giving $2,000. Uh, you've got five strategies now, you've got $10,000 allocated to each strategy and, you know, decide on when you are going to rebalance the strategy and all those things. So the code is available in the description. The high-end result code is available only for the Quant program students. So if you have any questions, just let me know, leave a comment or send the email for our official email address available in the about page and we will respond to you. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.